<laughs> Hi, my name is Erika Hörteborn and in this video I'll be presenting my project Informed by Wind. This is built around the design prototype that you see to the left in the video, which is a knitted uh, structure. Uh, this project will also be exhibited at Spark Gallery in Malmö later on when there is fewer res corona restrictions. I am a PhD student at Chalmers University of Technology uh, at the Department of Architecture and Str Civil Engineering. Uh, and I'm also part of the research group Architecture and Engineering. I've also previously worked as an architect and I'm trained as a structural engineer. So this project uh, takes inspirations from, from both uh, the structural side as well as the aesthetic architectural side. Um, the problem with buildings is that they look desperately static. This is a quote that has stuck with me uh, throughout my project. It's from a, a paper that I read a while back uh, where they talk about buildings as not being static but uh, rather changing with uh, the use of the uh, building or aging, although this change is not really visible. Uh, so buildings look static. Uh, and I've posed the question, what if buildings were moving, a visible moving, visibly moving? Wouldn't that be more intriguing uh, to, to have something move in the wind? similar to a tree, trees or the grass or nature around us moves in the wind or as a fabric around a dancer like that like you see in this image. I'm researching textile architecture and how textiles could be used in different ways to improve architecture uh, and in this project my interests are the intersection between textile architecture, wind and form architecture and lightweight architecture. That means that um, the textiles that I'm looking at are uh, lightweight and flexible so that they can move in the wind. Um, text, the concept of textile architecture is nothing new. In fact, uh, the architect and theorist Gottfried Semper uh, even stated that the original and true walls are textiles, saying that hanging carpets remain the true walls, the visible boundaries of space. The often solid walls behind them were necessary for reasons that had nothing to do with creation of space. They were needed for security, for supporting the load, for their permanence, and so on. Textile could also be structural. There are several very good example of textile architecture where the textile plays the major structural element uh, and usually the roof. Uh, as in these two, exa two examples, the O2 Arena in London and the umbrellas at Medina Haram Piazza. In my project, I've drawn inspirations from, among other things, dance performances. This image is taking taken from a workshop, a small workshop that I held together with a few colleagues and the dancer Arika Yamada. Um, here we're playing around with the textile and a fan and seeing how the textile interacts with the body. Uh, and Arika even said that uh, after a while the textile even became like um, a dance partner. Uh, or a partner in dance. Um, and you can see, taking this uh, to architecture, you can see the dancer as a structure that holds and directs uh, the textile movement. Uh, and this could be applied to a building as well. So this is the main prototype in, in this exhibition. It's a, it's a knitted structure based on a, a drop stitch technique. 
the pattern uh, is based on three fractals, uh, which uh, can be seen as a structural pathways where the where the forces in the textile could be move, could move and uh, where you could have attachment. Um, depending on how it mount, it's mounted on the frame, it will move differently. And here's a video of how the piece moves in the wind. Uh, you can see the soft ripples on the larger billowing uh, pockets. Uh, and you can see how the textile, uh, the whole piece of the textile moves in the wind. Uh, it's mounted only at the top at this uh, test. Um, yeah, and you, it's, um, it creates an ever-changing structure, uh, almost dancing in the wind. Um, the textile could also be mounted on both top and bottom when, and then you get a more uh, stable overall shape in the structure. Uh, the, the billowing or the uh, bubbles in the, in the textile is more pronounced, um, but and still a very interesting shape. At least I find it very interesting and I hope you do too. Uh, so the, the exhibited textile or this project is based on a knitted structure. Uh, and a knitted structure is, is built up by uh, a set of loops, interlinking loops, uh, creating courses and waves. Uh, if you compare this to a woven structure, uh, the knitted structure is more flexible since the yarns are uh, in loops instead of uh, straight lines. Um, so even with a non-elastic thread, you get a fairly flexible, or in most cases, a fairly flexible uh, textile with a knitted structure, depending on what type of knit uh, and knitting, what type of knit pattern. A knitted structure also allows for more variation in uh, in three dimensionality of the surface without cutting and sewing. The larger piece that I've shown is, has a drop stitch pattern, which is the same as this smaller piece uh, where, where you have bigger and smaller loops uh, creating a pattern and a three dimensionality of the structure. These bigger and smaller loops are created by knitting on um, knitting on a knitting machine, knitting on both the back and front bed, uh, and then releasing some of the uh, loops, thus creating larger loops uh, in some places. And you get a very dramatic change uh, just between uh, two courses or two waves. Uh, this is uh, a close-up of the, the larger piece before uh, pulling out all of the stitches. Uh, so this is the right side of the textile. Uh, and here you see it from the purl side where I uh, manually pull out some loops uh, or the loops that are in the pockets, creating the bigger loops. Uh, and in the pattern, uh, it's only the pockets that will uh, run and, and be, um, be allowed to be pulled out. Uh, the branches of the fractal trees cannot be pulled out because it's uh, knitted on only one bed. Uh, and thus you get the very, uh, very large difference in loop size uh, in the textile, which creates the three-dimensionality of the textile. I've also explored other uh, types of patterns and ways of creating three-dimensionality of a uh, knitted textile. Here's um, an example of hanging stitches um, and uh, thus creating a sort of draping effect. 
another interesting pattern that uh, pattern that I find interesting is the false lace. And here you don't have the same pronounced difference in surface structure, but you have a difference in transparency of the textile, especially when wind is applied and you get it when it's more stretched out. Uh, this is especially vis visible if you look close up to the textile. Uh, and you, in, in this close up, you can also see that there is a surface structure, uh, which is quite interesting if you're close to the textile, but further back, uh, you won't notice this three dimensionality of the textile. And this is also almost only visible uh, without the wind present. Uh, and with wind present, it will be stretched out and then you instead get the more transparent textile, which could be an interesting effect to use in the project as well. Here is an example combining the jacquard pattern with a drop stitch pattern, uh, which gives you the quite dramatic three dimensionality from the drop stitch uh, and more pronounced uh, changes with the coloring change. Uh, it also has a very interesting backside with the um, bird's eye jacquard pattern in the branches of the tree and the um, floats, uh, which are the straight yarns uh, on the backside in between the branches. These floats also keep the shape of the textile a bit um, more in place, which could be utilized in an architectural structure. Other ways of modifying a knitted structure or any textile structure is to use different types of yarns. And in this project, we used a heat changing textile. Uh, so this textile will shrink and, uh, and harden uh, when heat is applied. Uh, and, thus, and then you get a, a very interesting three-dimensional shape as well. This uh, type of yarn is called Pimo text uh, and could be used in different ways to create a three dimensionality of a textile. So this type of structure that is created within this project could be used for, for example, wind breaking structures or possibly on facades where it could pick up movements in the wind uh, and create a more comfortable wind around, environment around the structure while still being a very interesting and, and living uh, piece of architecture uh, that will not look the same from day to day. So this project is obviously not something that came to me over one night uh, and I've got a lot of inspiration and help from other people that I'd like to mention here. Um, and I also like to thank you for watching this video presentation and I really hope that you will come and see the exhibition once it's possible to have it in real life. Uh, and feel free to contact me if you're, uh, if you're curious and want to know more. Thank you for watching. <laughs>